Welcome viewers to Manifesting the Divine Nature. I'm Apostle Daniel Songa, and today I want to share a prophetic message called The Coming Fall of Christianity. And um, it is important, any person that is a person of faith, you understand this, you walk according to the prophetic patterns, seeking the things that have gone, the things where we are at, and seeking what is coming ahead. And um, it's been a matter of culminations of uh, experiences and encounters in the high plans that is supposed to be communicated to the saints to understand how to prepare yourself and to brace yourself up for the things that are ahead of you. The reason as to why um, this message is coming in this sense is because we have been having a period of 2000 years and it's important that we begin to unveil what is behind the scenes in regarding to the matters that are taking place to shape up this particular kind of a trajectory that perhaps somebody will be shaken into awakeness and begin to put in place the realities of how to awaken and to shake out this matter. There's a lot of things that have already been patterned in, in scriptures regarding all that is the basis of the foundation of the message I'm bringing across. And I'm praying that you come to the end, you, you, you be able to listen keenly. As, as much as the title of it may cause a jacking into your being, it's important that you do not egoistically shield yourself from the world that is coming ahead of you to resist it, but listen to it because the force of the matters that are embedded in this is something that you cannot ignore. You cannot, you cannot assumably and have just hope that you're going to run away from this matter. Now, the mystery of what we've been called to in Christ Jesus was from the early church, I begin to to speak about some patterns that you can have historical observations where we are at. Then I'll speak some things concerning what is the divine blueprint of God. Then I'll speak to some things concerning the warfares in high plans. In scriptures, it speaks about we do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And all these kinds of things have been taking place and we want to go straight back into the early church to begin to see where did the rain begin beating us and i will tackle that a bit to understand the interceptions that have taken place right from the root uh, you see for any interception that you want to mitigate you must first of all return to the root of the matter and uh, you can see right from the beginning this is a kind of a journey that if you are mature maybe i'll release uh, the thing that can speak plainly is maybe 5% of the knowledge of the realities of the matter. Maybe other things, unless you're a follower of other things that I, I do in terms of the teachings and such, that's when we can be able to unveil all the realities of the journeys that God has put in man. The journey that God has put in man is not a journey of being to be a fence sitter or to be a passerby in the matters of faith. God has called man into a place of practicability, but when the interception came into place, we were able to be separated from the divine blueprint. And from being separated from the divine blueprint means now everything that could go wrong has to go wrong. Now, look at the beginnings. It speaks to Adam first of all and establishes Adam, then you speak about the fall, of which also in itself is a different understanding for the mature. But uh, regarding the church um, and the concept concerning Christianity, why am I speaking that there's a coming fall of Christianity? In my personal work with God, I started with my personal work with God because of the hunger, because I grew up as a Christian in the environment of faith and with extraordinary kinds of experiences in God, knowing the move of the Spirit of God. You've seen the uh, uh, revivals coming and going. And uh, there's something concerning the psychology of man that man in his psychology, we are always prepared now to how to understand, to cushion ourselves from the occurrences and to have an understanding or to produce a knowledge that will suit us to be comfortable in the place where we have been constrained. For instance, no one wants to be in slavery. But if you were able to quarantine the people and put them in slavery for a long period, eventually they'll be indoctrinated in a way to find a hope of a joy of a fulfillment in the same slavery and not seeking to break beyond the boundaries. And that's the same thing that has been happening to us as the children of God. And I want you to mark these words carefully. Perhaps it will stir your heart to begin to enter into a place of being launched into deeper dimensions in God. In the year 2006, because of the hunger in God, uh, I was carried by the Father to a, a place that was known to me in the natural it was a place in the natural then he placed me at that place then he told me to look up and when i looked up by his own finger he wrote a short statement in the sky for me and i read that statement 
after I read that statement, and now eventually the father said, I'm going to seal this statement with a bright cloud, that after this cloud has sealed this statement, you won't remember that which I've written for you, but I've, I've really programmed this matter within you. So this came out of the hungers that I had for God in the deeper dimensions of what exactly is the reality of the mystery of the Christ. And uh, that happened in 2006. Now you realize the things I'm speaking to you is a culmination of more than a decade information that has been coming to us or in my personal kind of experiences in God. Some of them is coming into the councils in heaven, the deeper dimensions of councils in heaven. I know most of the times as a believer you understand the councils of heaven up to the dimensions maybe of um, of what you can say, the, the dimension of the throne, then eventually the highest planes is the cherubims and the seraphims, that is the highest planes for a common believer to understand. But the higher dimensions above the throne that you ought to know that begins to institute matters regarding consciousness and operationalization even in this world and even the dimensions that are yet to be unfolded look like for the beginning when he's speaking to Adam and he tells them of the tree of the knowledge of evil and good you shall not eat and 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 uh, but you one matter concerning this as much as you may say it as a fall the mystery behind this there's a lot of things that are shrouded in scripture that it takes the wise to see because one of the things you ask yourself why who was in charge of the security of the garden of eden it's not adam was in charge of the security of the garden of eden because adam was placed inside the garden of eden so it means it was god who was responsible of who comes within the garden but he says this he tells man that in the day that you shall eat this fruit, you shall surely die. Satan comes and he tells man that you shall surely not die. Now, there's a lot of things. A life that Adam is living is already in a life of innocence and there's another layer of existence out there that Adam is not privy to. But when Satan is tempting Adam, where is God? And God is watching in the conversation, he seems to be absent and such. But you see, this is what Satan tells Adam. He tells Adam that, uh, he tells Eve that you shall not surely die, but you shall be like God. Eventually, Eve comes to the place of eating. I want to just touch something there a bit before I proceed. When he says that, it means by the time Eve is partaking of the fruit, he, she knows already that she will not die, that they will not die. Because it's, a, it's, it's not a guesswork, it's not that I'm trying. She knows established why that I'm not going to fall dead because the comprehension before is that I partake of this, I die. Then listen to this when God begins to speak concerning why man has eaten the tree. He says that now man has become like one of us. He says now man has become like one of us. And now because of this, let us take away the tree of life. Now, the reason as to why he says, let us take away the tree of life, because the journey of reality of man has now begun. This tree does not belong to Satan. The manifestation of this tree in the human life, this tree is a, is a plucking out of the nature of the soul of God that is planted in the garden. There is an emanation of the soul of God that is, permit, is given to man, that God has restricted man to partake of it. Now he says, let us remove them from partaking of the tree of life, because the moment he partakes of the tree of life, it means any state that is in when he has not mastered, what is in the state that is in, it means it will be established in that sense. In other words, if you partake of the tree of life and you are a gossiper, you will be eternally a gossiper. It will cement and concretize eternally the state in which you are in. But part of it in the book of Revelation, you begin to see Jesus saying, they that shall overcome shall be granted access to the tree of life. It means this is the kind of journey that we are in or we have been in as the children of God. Now, why am I speaking about the coming fall of Christianity? Because the arsenals of the things that have been given to us, there has been an orchestration that has managed to really sidestep and to, and to um, how, how do I put it, it's like a, there's an enchantment that was able to be placed upon the saints that they could not comprehend the things or the mysteries of God or the Deep, deeper realities of the intention of God and to be willing to walk that journey because by divine design, like in the Old Testament, this is one thing that you see. In the Old Testament, when God is speaking, he's speaking expressly. In the New Testament, when you see God speaking, God is not speaking from the dimension of him as God, but the Spirit of God has mingled with the Spirit of man. So anything that a man speaks regarding God from the New Testament, you begin to see there's the, the lessing of the nature of the maturity and the quality of this person in the divine, and it begins to become the expression of the word in the New Testament. And that is the marker that I want you to begin to see. 
I'll take you a bit into the journeys of the experiences in the councils in heaven in terms of the mitigation uh, of, of the things that I, I, I'm beginning to speak about. I've been in a council, for instance, of looking into the matters where like, like these councils where the, the patriarchs of faith are in place and the matters have been put in place. Or allow me to put this across just, just uh, uh, a bit. One time, I was caught up to the throne and then the father said, sit on my throne and judge my prophets. Now, this concept is a bit unsettling to some people because to sit on his throne means you have to be granted access into the functioning of the omniscience nature of him. So he get, granted me access into the localized objective omniscience to perceive and I could be able to see. And when you, when you have that kind of an experience, you realize the English words that define this terminology like omniscience, omnipresence, do not really meet the standard. And I was able to see all the things in the degree of the matters that were given to them and what they managed to execute and to what level and all the forms of interceptions and all the resources they will face according to the flock that God has sent them to. In other dimensions, like uh, in the same kind of, in other councils, uh, I was able to meet people like Napoleon and who, who they put across matters like in this world, they will comprehend to a particular level and now when they're in glory, they'll comprehend things in a particular layer and their desire or the groaning for them is that they may unlock for the church but the enchantment that has taken place is that there's been a blindfolding and continually resistance of the Holy Spirit to the degree that as much as we have experience of the warmth of God, we have technically rejected the truth in the higher plans. This is something that you need to begin to process intentionally. Because the matters as we stand so far, look at the world the way it is. You can say that the saints carry the power of God, or the, they are the children of God, and they have the understanding of the comprehension of the kingdom of God. But you ask yourself one question. God being sovereign, how is he giving the governance of the world to the children of wickedness and not the children of righteousness? Because of this same matter. Amen. Now, in this particular council, one of them, I was, I was sitting there and I was understanding matters as to where concepts like uh, why did science has to part ways with faith and such and you begin to see that from the beginning it was not that was not what was the intention of God because the believers are the people that possess one of the scripture that says in the beginning was the word the word was God the word was God and in that kind of a comprehension it tells you that the word that created all things is the design of all things. In other words, it means all things beat scientific realities. The word is the reality of searching out any matter and any substance and understanding the combinations and the permutations that are required in this entire world to produce forth reality in existence. One of the things that Jesus Christ is speaking or, or John is speaking regarding Jesus Christ, he says that, uh, he says, for God so loved the world. That word world is the word cosmos or the systems of operation. And he says, he sent forth his son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's not the issue about believers. It's the issue of plugging into the realities of heaven of how to do things, how to do science, how to do politics, or all the spectrums of political, social, and economic kinds of systems. That is the essence of what God pre-initialized to begin to communicate to the children of faith right from the beginning. I'll show you the interception that took place because uh, these things does not begin now. It, you have to find out the route from the early church where they faltered and went or they were intercepted in terms of the battles in the heavens. Then you are able not to begin to understand. So now at the end of it, because look at the mystery of this matter is the end is the one that perfects even the beginning. You see, the glorious ending is the one that perfects all the subsequent ages that have gone. Now, in the raising of this matter in the early church, we begin to see some things that are of hybrid civilization among the children of faith. For instance, uh, some of them are locked up in prison when persecution comes. And by divine providence, now this comes initially by uh, what is called the sovereign act of God. By divine providence, he says, he comes and begins to break prison for the children of God and they will be delivered from the prisons. Watch me closely in that is beginning by bringing a hybridized civilization of showing the children of faith that there's another civilization that's going to supersede the civilization of this world because it is for the purpose of declaring the sovereignty of God. Everything that God does sovereignly, you're supposed to harness it, master it, replicate it, and come to the place of doing it at will. For the prison doors, again, to become the one that will manage to contain the children of God eventually, and they were killed by that, 
psychologically how we live is we learn ourselves to how to suit that so that we anesthetically serve our senses to know how to define that positively but technically what we fail to understand is that we have negated to understand that we have been intercepted from the civilization that God had downloaded upon the children of faith I don't know I could come and see, uh, I talked about the, the concept of science and such, and uh, I saw that kind of, uh, of a reality in the, in the early church, what was called prophecy was. Prophecy was supposed to be like you're speaking according to supernatural inspiration and being inspired from heaven. And what happened, I was taken in those kinds of councils and happenings of those historical times, and I could see among the saints, some people who rise in the congregation and now the custodians of faith. And this is one of the things that you need to mark clearly because it calls for sensitivity for us to understand where the chasm began developing. Among the saints, as much as the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors will deal with doctrine and they will deal with, uh, with, 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 uh, with admonition concerning faith, morality, faith towards God, uh, all these kind of things in terms of the doctrine of faith and such, there are people in the congregation who are diverse kinds of callings and the moment a time will come when people are saying they are going to pray and the Spirit of God will come upon them and some will prophesy, some will begin to rise in the midst of them and begin to speak scientific inspirations. And this was not sitting well with the custodians of faith. And now eventually began to create the chasm that you begin to see. Now you can begin to track back uh, in the terms of things that I'm speaking about and see how the gap is. The ministry of Jesus Christ was supposed to supersede. You cannot say Christianity is a religion because it is not. It's the same way like you cannot say I'm of this religion, I cannot take mathematics. It doesn't matter which religion you are in. Mathematics is a universal concept. It's the same concept concerning Christianity. Christianity, how it was supposed to be defined was a coming to a place of knowing and acknowledging reconciliation back into the sonship with God. It was not supposed to be something that is a separatism. And it would be adapted by any kind of person in the diversity of their views of life, in the diversity of their kinds of culture, and they will assimilate to harness all things and bring them into the frequency that meets the standards of holiness and alignment unto God. You see, all the things say that all the mountains shall come unto the mountain of the Lord. This is the main aspect of what Christianity is, means you ought to understand how to influence every kind of mountain so that Christ may be exalted. Influencing a mountain does not come with the dimension of threats. It means you have to have intricate, intimate knowledge to unveil the truth that are in that particular kind of a mountain. To unveil it and then eventually to influence what is the divine blueprint that ties to the spark or the particular or the, the, the kind of movement that was within them in the establishment of the thing they are doing in terms of like for God so loved the world in that world it means God sees and through the eyes of the saints God ought to see and to know to love the way they are doing things and to know how to step in that particular kind of space and awaken the Christ seed so that now eventually all things and every form of mountain mountains let me put it this way let's say like mountains are forms of energy there's no way you can destroy energy you can only transmit it and transform the energy so it means any kind of ideology that has ever come into being you cannot come from the place of ignorance and work that uh, that that philosophy and say it is just all that without the complete understanding of penetrating that space and knowing how you're going to elevate it into the domain of Christ that is the principal foundation of the thing that God has been waiting for for the children of faith but it has not been sparking now we're 2,000 years uh, since Christ came and uh, there are particular kind of things that I've seen in the council of God like for instance what is the mystery of the blood of Jesus when it had accomplished 1000 years upon the mercy seat and you realize the particular kind of fundamental things especially when it comes to the the, 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 the first layer of redemption which is in the dimension of the elimination of uh, uh, the nature of the fall which is uh, which has the implications of things like infirmities and diseases when the blood of jesus had accomplished 1000 years it means it begins to become dispensational establishment that any person that is of faith is supposed to come now naturally without effort to that establishment you can attest to it that until now the mystery of the blood of Jesus upon the mercy seat upon the, all those numbers have the significance as to why I speak about a thousand years is an establishment wise. Then there's a second level that is coming about the year 2037, 2038, there when the blood of Jesus finishes uh, upon the mercy city 2000 years, and that is another dimension that is of the expectation of where the saints ought to be. Now, the particular kinds of 
the exposures where God has placed the people of God or where God has permitted regarding humanity. You realize this, any human being, the fundamentals that are normally found like in the Old Testament, like in wisdom it says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter but the honor of kings to search it out. It means God has to conceal. It means he, he makes a sidestepping and you have to find out matter because you have been designed with the capacity to really unravel that which God conceals. So it means the work of God is not for the puppeteering. Is a real substance of work where you have to prove your fabric to be a person that has an equivalence of the reality of the value of God. It means you have to be in the God class. It means when God is concealing something, he has to conceal like God. And you have to find out how to beat God in his concealing so that you unveil it. And that kind of a tango of genius of growth in God eventually begins to now become the unlocking of the quality of your being as per how you are designed from the beginning. Look at this. The kingdom of God is a strange place. Technically, you realize you don't need Jesus Christ to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus himself in his doctrine says, any person that comes without the door is a thief. So it technically tells you there's a lot of ability to access the kingdom without Christ. So it means even if you enter through the window or whatever, a thieves, it means there's a lot of thieves in the kingdom, but the children of the kingdom have loved the door. So they said, the children of the kingdom, when they are given the kingdom, they said, no, for us, we will love the door. We will step at the door and the door will be sufficient for us. That's what the children of the kingdom said. But yet he says, come into the kingdom. He said, no, but the thieves have entered the kingdom and you see a lot of them now because they have entered the kingdom in thievery, it means now they have been permitted to become the rulers. Yet when the children have a board, they have, board has, they have made their board of the door and say, the door is beautiful. This kind of things is not, when I speak about the coming fall of Christianity, is not something that is strange. We already have the patterns of the intentions that God had for the children of Israel. And most of the times, uh, saints have been, have been mocking uh, the Jews without necessarily coming into the intricate observation of the thing that are really related. That means is relating to you a particular kind of a pattern of how you are most likely going to behave and you ought to break from that seal. Look at this. God is raising the children of Israel and he begins to show them a particular journey. You can see that in, uh, um, in Numbers, I think, for 13 and 14, where Moses is calling the 12 to go and spy the land and 10 bring a negative report. It means the 10, 10 are the kind of prophetic people who are supposed to usher people into an entrance. And on the basis of what they spoke, eventually they sanctioned the children of Israel and they began going into a loop for 40 years because of things they uttered. And you see, there and then you begin to see God speak his frustration. He says that they will go through that, but God begins to say his agenda. That is the first time I think in uh, Numbers 14, around 20, they speak that as long as I live, the earth shall be full of the, shall be covered with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. It means God wanted through them the glory of God to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, but they sanctioned God. Other place in Exodus 19, it speaks to them, I said, I intended for you to become a nation of priesthood. It does not necessarily mean that they became. He said, I've called you to become a nation of priesthood. It means God is speaking to them his intention, but technically it does not necessarily mean that it became that. Because you see, eventually shortly after that, he says, it begins to now prepare the entire nation of Israel to come into the experienced knowledge like Moses. So that imagine if the entire Israel was brought to the stature of Moses' nature of work with God. But when God is preparing them for that, they eventually they shout at God and say, no, we'll not, don't want God to speak to us. You speak to him and whatever he says. In other words, they separate themselves to go. So Israel continued to be Israel, but there was already a detour. Do you see the same kinds of patterns concerning Christianity? Who is our Moses in this matter? Our Moses is Jesus Christ who comes as the child of God, as the first begotten of the Father, that we may enter that dimension of coming into the family of God, becoming the protege of God. But eventually, we still resist and say, no, that is Jesus Christ. This is, I'm just human. That is Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm human. There's a scripture in John that says, in, in 1 John, it says that any spirit that denies that Christ came in the flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. Because the acknowledgement of saying Christ came in the flesh, you are manifesting within yourself and saying, I am the Christ. I am the nature of God. I am God kind. I have equality with God. Look at John 8 to John around 10. The, the discourse between Jesus and the Jews. To the Jews, when Jesus said that, that God is his father, it means he claimed that he has equality with God. Now I want to define the concept Christian a bit. 
so that we understand why am I saying the coming fall of Christianity because many a times we have thought it to become like a, a, a kind of a religion and such and the kinds of exercisings that God must take us through for us to really come to the place of the stature of fulfilling his work this is not something that can be you can dodge the councils in the high plans of operation that govern the cosmic existence according to the power that God has granted unto them means these particular things have to meet the threshold. I remember one time we were doing a corporate ascension session. Then in that ascension we were carried to the throne of God as a corporate group and then we were taken to the side of the north. There's a lot of things that were happening there. The throne side by the side of the north. In this corporate ascension, every entity of creation had to be present to observe in the thing that God was doing in that in that group. There's a particular dimension where they had to look and there's a particular dimension they had to look away and it was only the triune. Like the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that were participation, the, the participants in the thing that were instilling in this, the, this, what I can use the terminology, the embryonic formation of what God is releasing upon the earth. And there's a lot of mysteries regarding this. So, uh, uh, I'm speaking about the, the reality is what exactly do we supposed to be exercise ourselves in God? Solomon speaks in Ecclesiastes says that the matters of the earth God has sealed in man that he may exercise himself. That the things you face in life you are for the exercising of yourself because he's pursuing the divine seed. But when there is slumber, it means you have the divine seed within you but you're not exercising it and eventually the one that comes to veil you has caused it that it begins to mitigate the agenda of God. Now look at this. In the name Christian, when you say Christian, and sometimes people say, sometimes I hear theologians coming to the place of argument of saying that, um, oh, we're not called Christians. It is the is the is the is the is the heathen that call the saints Christians who are called disciples. So they say the best thing is disciples. No, I'm telling you authoritatively, the term disciple, Jesus Christ did not come to make disciples. At that point in time, they were disciples, but he had to have the evident establishment. When you say Christian, it means it's the same word. It's Christian came from the uh, Greek word Christos, which means the anointed one. But it's the same one when you transpose Christian into the Hebraic, is the same word Messiah. So it means when somebody said these were Christians, it means these ones are the ones that have been de have descended from above. It means they are the manifestation. These are the God incarnates upon the earth. So the terminology Christian is not a philosophical expression of a religion these are terminologies to say these are gods these are divine this this god incarnate in the flesh that's the essence of what it is now you can begin to see the the, the seriousness of the matter of the things that be lying now over the ages spiritual wickedness in high places has strategized to ensure that the people of faith are in a place where they are bound look at the doctrine of jesus christ concerning the saints for instance, there's no single place where Jesus is speaking things like spiritual gifts. For Jesus Christ, the gift was the Holy Spirit in the sense that you will not come to the place of operating in spiritual gifts, but you will be divinely enabled to operate as God. That was the mystery concerning Christ. He never spoke about spiritual gifts as such. It doesn't mean that the person speaking about spiritual gifts is wrong. It means these are downgrading by the inability to really ascend to comprehend the heart of the Christ. This has been an anchorage and a cry from the throne of God that is seeking a people to this day. Why am I speaking about this, this the coming fall of Christianity? Because the powers that be is not going to be legislated because there's a merciful God who will intervene. Over the ages, the position you have taken is that God will intervene and he has not been intervening and there's been clutter being thrown upon the edges, upon clutter, upon clutter. I remember one time I was carried to the throne and I was shown mysteries concerning the fall of man and all these kind of things and I saw the entirety of the blueprint of the redemption of God. I being as a preacher, I thought in my own understanding that what I've already grasped, the moment I appear on earth, it will take me a short moment and I will deal the blow of the work of the fallenness and there will be a total redemption into man coming in the fullness of God. Now when I was coming before the throne and past the circle of the 24 elders, at a particular kind of a gateway, there appeared a one that I can call, I say is, is named by the name Azazel, and in the temptation that he met me with at that gateway, the energy and the strength to overcome his temptation caused the substance that I carried from God to how I could see it ripple, how it could not be accomplished in a moment, but it began to ripple 
into the edges to come, edges gone, and it began to split. The eternal, it was like in the seed of the eternal essence. Now, eventually, in that moment of that temptation and that gateway, it had to split, and I could see it ripple into all the edges to come and the edges gone. Then I began to, to now know the ways of God. God is not going to use people who are wimps. You have to enter a place where you begin now to seek out what is the seed of reality. And because the heart of man has not loved that and you already love the tradition of your, uh, of your flaw in terms of understanding God, a fall is ahead of the saints. So the earth as we know it is a new garment. And that means the, the, the time of the shift of the times where some matters must be deliberated has come. There's no escape route. There's no escape route. The new garment of it means matters have to be called forth. There has to be a recalibration. That's why you're seeing a lot of the things. Don't, don't, don't be clouded. Most of the times, it doesn't matter whether we have been pushed deeper. Always, any angle that you have been pushed, sometimes there's a consciousness that develops that begins to encourage people as though things are well. But when people who are entering in the place of mercy shall begin to emerge they begin to now enter a place of judging realities i'll paint for you a small picture as i close as much as i'm not i've not really gotten into the the reality of the matters of which which we shall handle in many subsequent teachings much of the things concerning the coming of jesus christ or the preparation for the coming of jesus christ most people are waiting for jesus christ to appear in the cloud and they're looking for um an escape from a world that is overburdened beyond their discernment. But you realize Jesus Christ is not coming because of that equation. The equation of the coming of Jesus Christ means there has to be an equivalence of the glory in the groom that has to equate to the glory in the bride. That's what will manifest the coming of Jesus Christ. And sometimes people speak about that there shall be a rapture before the Antichrist comes, but those things are not that way in, in matters of reality which we shall handle in days to come. What is most of the things you see in the book of Revelation or the divine plan of God is the things that you see there being legislated is the matter between heaven and the saints. As I said earlier, the introduction of the kingdom of God was that there was a hybridization of a civilization of the kingdom of God coming and superseding the kingdom that be so that to influence. The saints ought to participate, like what is called uh, 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 the doctrinal or uh, um, your theology say puts it this way: that there's the first heaven, second heaven, and the third heaven. And he says the war, there's the warfare in the far, in the third heaven where it was Michael that kicked out Satan. And eventually, there's what is called the warfare in the second heaven that is normally the battles of the souls. And there's the warfare in the first heaven, which is the flesh dimension. And uh, when saints say that I've been born again, it means in the spirit of him has already been sorted. Then eventually. There, as much as you're, you're born again and in the spirit sort of because that was the dimension of God, you, you realize that the dimension of your soul, you are the leader of that battle. You have to lead that battle and eventually God supplies the resources. Now I'll show you how that maps up also in the cosmic design. When you're leading the battle of your second heaven, which is your soul, in your soul you have to choose the path of God and to have to undergo the process of sanctification and such. It means... In the second heaven realities means you have to master the dimension of your soul and now eventually the second heaven it means it is the children of God, human beings, who are supposed to invade that space of the second heaven and to know how to wage war in that place and angels in that dimension are going to be subject to men. It is men that will be giving instructions to the angelic forces to wage that war. It means now in that place where men now will dislodge Satan from the second heaven and because it is men who have dislodged Satan in the second heaven now he has to seek for a man to house him in the in the first heaven which is called the flesh dimension who now emerges as the Antichrist. The saints love reading scriptures like uh, don't you know that the saints will judge angels? But do you think you walk the kind of the Christian life that you've walked or you've seen and you be told sit here and judge the angels? You realize that won't suffice. It means for you to judge an angel, the stature of your becoming, not, by div not because God is helping you to judge. No, the stature of your becoming, when an angel appears in your presence, you comprehend the complexities of that angel beyond how he knows himself. Now begin to think about that.
If you read Ephesians 3 10, Paul speaks about that by the church, the manifold wisdom of God may be made known unto the principality. It means the church ought to come to a place of rising in a place and to sit down entities that abide in the glory of God. And by the church, they have to be educated in the manifold wisdom of God. Because there has been this kind of a nudging from the presence of God to woman to come in that particular place, but there has been resistance, and people have loved the fear of deception when actually they have been deceived. The world as you know it, in the dimensions of faith, do not be deceived that you are not deceived. There is nothing terrible as believing that you are not deceived and watching again a deception when you are deep into the deception. It's a strange thing to, to look into. Deception is not a joke. One of the places in scripture, in Revelation, it speaks about, uh, there's, uh, there's, um, there's a place where it speaks about, he opened the first seal, and said, when he opened the first seal, but these seals are seven seals. But these seals, inside the seals, are the redemption plan. Inside the seals. Then he says, I, he opened the first seal, then he said, come and see. And then he said, I saw, and those are white horse. And the rider was given to the white horse and he went about conquering and conquering. He was given a bow and an arrow and went about conquering and conquering. And this white horse, you realize the ride of this white horse is not Jesus Christ, but is a deceiving spirit that is sent out into the world. Now, if this deceiving spirit is released from heaven, if you have been defeated to conquer the deception that is coming from Satan or from man, will you really stand the deception that is coming from the very realities that is coming to prove your fabric to see what is the authentic seed? It's very important for you to understand. As I close this part, in the year 2014, I speak that in a small measure. I was carried to the throne and there was the, the, four, uh, the four living creatures you call the four cherubims. And the, uh, the, before the, you see, the, the throne of God, um, maybe I can speak that descriptively. There's the throne of God, then the next layer is like the, 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 the layer of the four cherubims, then the next layer that follows the layer of the 24 elders. So I was standing between the, the, the circle of the 24 elders and the circle of the four cherubims. And then I saw the four thunders that came and began to speak in that place. And then I heard what this thunder spoke. But the foundation of this thunder is a mystery concerning the four kinds of gospel that begin to reveal the established truth. And each thunder was scheduled to have a period of 10 years to sound. So it means the complete circle comes in a 40-year period. And then, that was the year 2014. And then, after I heard what the thunders had sounded, of the four gospels are supposed to be preached, the Lord sealed three of them. And then he gave me the understanding and programmed the one thunder in, in me. This was not in the human language. It was the language of the higher dimensions. Some dimensions of the angelic operations cannot even partake of that language. It's a higher language and such. Then, he opened this one and programmed into my being and said, this one, interpretation-wise, you can interpret it in the human language and call it like the Moselle and Thunder. It begins to work. It begins to become a Thunder. It begins to go forth and the entire cycle must be completed. When the four have sounded, the fullness of the principles of the virtue of sainthood and the establishment of being the protege. This is not now a, a confession or prophetically saying we are the sons of God, but it begins to come to the place of the manifestations of the sons of God. And these sons of God is something that you ought to seek because these ones now will begin to bring forth the emergence of the reality of what Christianity is and they will judge the powers that exist. It is very important that you exercise yourselves or your senses unto God. The mysteries regarding the operations in God is not in the dimensions you have seen. Where we've been called into is the dimension of priests and kings. Uh, but you understand fivefold is not a priest. Apostle is not a priest. A prophet is not a priest. Priesthood is deeper dimension. A priest does not operate by grace. A priest operates by the laws of existence. A priest means your place where you master. A priest does not operate by faith. A priest does not operate in a place of substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. No, a priest has to be in the tangibility of the things that are not been seen. He has to see them and he has to operate by those laws. A priest does not ask God to come down. A priest forces God to manifest. A priest has the ability to sanction God. A priest has all these kinds of diversity that eventually begin to, to, to learn in the various kinds of teachings. I pray that maybe you can begin to follow my materials, maybe on my Facebook called Apostle Daniel Rosonga. I, YouTube and every kind of an arena and in terms of the information I'll be given to you you begin to learn then eventually maybe you can be able to get into the premium material that will begin to give you the intricate teachings into the deeper layers of realities of manifesting divinity 
into humanity. And this is what shall cause us not to live a blessed hope, but shall bring us the place of manifestation of standing and being able to, together with God, to judge existence and to manifest divinity and to establish the kingdom of God. We are not seeking to escape. We are seeking to bring God into this abode. And that is his heart's desire. In many other sessions, we begin to talk about the complexities of those kinds of encounters and the councils in heaven. And it shall relate to you what it shall give into your hands materials to equip you to become a true saint in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.